good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this Evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic, gave my heart to Christ over 55 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. Then one year later, God called me to preach, and I've been sharing Jesus ever since. Well, friends, we're in for a big one now. I've been telling you about our weather, but we got a big one coming uh, Sunday. Well, anyway, that's the way it has to be. Well, friends, listen, I'll be with you for a half an hour tonight. Won't you just kick off your slippers, sit back and relax, and pour your glass of iced tea or a cup of coffee? Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? Here's our thought for the day. If you have nothing to be thankful for, make up your mind there's something wrong with you. Tonight we're going to use the subject, Thanksgiving in Stocks and Bonds, and I'm taking my text from the 16th chapter of Acts and reading with the 23rd verse. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into an inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he threw out, drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had, uh, had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And it took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized he and his, and his straightway. And when he had brought them unto his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced be leaving in God with all of his house. Friends, listen. Many people today invest in stocks and bonds. They have invested in hope of financial gain, and their futures rest on their investments. And their moods rise and fall with the markets. Now, Paul and Silas had made more lasting investments they had sold out to their Savior. They had invested all their lives in His service, expecting eternal dividends. And they had stocks and bonds in a Philippian prison. How could these persecuted preachers be thankful? Friends, you've heard me say this many, many, many times. If things are bad, 
Maybe you're sitting on the pity pot and, and saying, woe is me, why does this have to happen to me? And all this and that. I remember when I had my cancer operation, I didn't question the Lord why it was me. I tell you one thing, I did a powerful lot of witnessing in that hospital when I was there. And, there, um, and the other day, uh, my wife and I went to a place for lunch in this restaurant, had the most wonderful opportunity to witness to this lady and tell her about Jesus. And she thanked me for the story I told her. I said, it's not a story, it's a testimony, a true testimony of what God can do for anybody. It doesn't have to be an alcoholic, it could be anybody. She did confess that she was agnostic, which means she says, okay, I believe there's a God, so what? And she said, yes. But I said, do you know that the Bible said we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God? Yes, she recognized that. And I said, God said that he loved us. And I said, I know he does. When we, my wife and I got ready to walk out, she gave me the biggest hug you ever saw in your life, right, to, right in the middle of that restaurant. But the people said, what's going on here? But listen, friends, if you're down in the dumps, things aren't going good, sit down, reevaluate your life, see where you're headed. What have you done for Jesus? Look what he's done for us, but what have we done for him? You know, there's that song, uh, do you know Jesus or you just know about Jesus? I know Jesus. You who have been born again know him personally. That's why you can call him your personal Savior. They were thankful for what God had done. Now, at midnight, Paul and Silas sang praises, 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praise unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Now, Hey, these guys that are in prison, they've done something, they've killed, they've stole, they've done something. But now, here's two preachers who have their socks beat off. I mean, they were beaten terrible. And here they were singing praises unto the Lord, thanking the Lord for the privilege that he had given them. Well, they praised God because he had saved them from sin. They praised God for what he had made salvation possible. How could they praise God after being beaten for their faith? Well, verse 23, And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Now, friends, I tell you, there's nothing. I used to be a boxer, and I've taken some pretty hard raps on the on the face. Now, it doesn't feel good, but these men had more than that. They were beaten with staves. They were they were bleeding. They were really in bad shape. But all of a sudden, they were just singing and praising God. They remembered that Christ had been beaten for them. And he had been wounded and bru bruised as prophesied. Read the 53rd chapter of some, Isaiah someday when you don't have much to do. Just read it and see what he really, really did for you and I. You and I can't envision the pain of driving those spikes in his hands and his feet and putting that crown of thorns in his head. And he did it all because of one thing. He loved us. Oh, friends, don't that mean anything to you? Anybody would do that, for, yet he was sinless and without sin, never did a nasty thing in his life. But he was taking your sins and my sins on him so that we might live forever. Boy, if you think about that, that'll charge your batteries. Well, like Jesus, they had been in prison for doing good. They might face death, but they remembered that Jesus had faced the cross. Now, their prison cell was dark, but Jesus had died for them on dark cavalry. You know, they were thankful for what God was doing. They knew that God was at work in their lives. In Philippians uh, 1.6, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. 
he's doing that for you and I right now. Oh, but he is. He knew. Now, they knew that God had called them to this place, Acts 16, 9. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over unto Macedonia and help us. Let me ask you this question. Did Paul go to the mission board and make applications for this? Did he ask for permission to go? No. He went. And so should we when we get our marching orders. Friends, I'm going to ask this to the Christians. Have you got your marching orders yet? Do you know what God wants for your life? I want to ask, do you know that? Well, if you don't, friends, you're really not very happy. God has a plan. He had a plan for your life. He's got a plan for my life. And <laughs> I've said this so many times. That night I was laying in a federal prison in Fairbanks, Alaska for trying to beat up on a police officer in five different counts against me. I never dreamed within my wildest dream that I would ever know peace, that I'd ever know sobriety, that I'd ever be privileged to be on the radio for 40-some years preaching TV and, and all these things. That was a miracle, but God did it because he knew what I was going to do. He knows what you're going to do. Oh, friends, I'm so grateful. Oh, my stars am I grateful that that night, that day, on that roof in Seattle when God called me to preach. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing I'd ever heard. A dummy like Cecil Moe up preaching to Jesus to people. Well, it happened, and I praise his holy name. And <clears throat> uh, they had witnessed conversion at a result of being there. Verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. They had seen the demon-possessed fortune teller delivered, verse 18. And this did she uh, many days, but Paul being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of the same hour. Here was a demon possession, a possessed fortune teller. She was giving Paul and him a lot of trouble. But Paul called out that demon, and that was it. They could then be thankful, knowing that they were in God's will. Now, beloved, you've heard me say this so many, many times. The most happy Christians in the world are those that are seeking the divine will of God. Friends, we do things, and they're not always right. I don't ever do all things right. And I wish I could tell you that I've always done what God asked me to do. I wish I could do that. I cannot do it. And I don't know of anybody on this world who can. But you start seeking the will of God and you're going to find joy unspeakable. Oh, my stars, I'm telling you. He's looking for rich people? No. Uh, educated people? Not necessarily. No. He's looking for surrendered, dedicated people. That's what Paul was. That's what Silas was. That's what Peter and all those men were. Now, he let, uh, he chose, I should say, those men to go out into the world and turn the world upside down for Jesus. I'll guarantee you, beloved, you and I wouldn't be saved today if those men didn't do their job. They felt called of God. Peter was a dad burn old fisherman. Yeah. And all those guys all had a trade. I had a trade. I was a roofing contractor. Did I want to give up roofing? Not necessarily. Did I want to go out and, and live by faith and nearly starve to death for years? Not necessarily. 
But I'll tell you, you just, if you do what God called you to do, he will, and if you, he'll supply your needs in Christ Jesus if you'll do what he wants you to do. You say, it's too difficult, Cecil. Well, it is difficult, I'll have to admit. But living the lost life wasn't very happy for me because I was a no-good alcoholic. Now, there's other things besides being worse than an alcoholic, I guess, but I, I thank God that I was because I would have never been able to reach the thousands of people over the years that I've been able to reach. And I didn't reach them. The Holy Spirit called them, and they put them in my way so I could introduce them to Jesus. He does all the work. Let's supposing that God told you to go over to your neighbor and witness to him about Jesus Christ. Oh, he said, I don't want to do that, Lord. I'm scared to do that. Did you know when you surrender to do that will, did you know that God has already prepared the heart of the person that you're going to go to see? He's preparing their heart. You're not have to worry about that. Now, if you talk to someone and they don't open your heart, don't, don't open their heart, nothing you can do. The Holy Spirit has to draw them before you could reach them. Well, are you thankful for what you're doing today or where you're going? Think about it. What have you and I done for Jesus this week? Think about it. Have you witnessed anybody? Have you sitting down and written a letter or send a gospel track out to somebody? Well, now only you can answer that. I sure can answer it. But, oh, he'd be pleased, brother and sister, if you'd do that. He would be so pleased. Don't be afraid. Pray for holy boldness. He'll give it to you. I've been praying that prayer for 55 years. Oh, God, give me holy boldness. Give me precious souls for my hire. And he'll do it. Even if you're going through troubled times. Well, we have two life-changing uh, opinions. We can focus on what God is doing and be thankful. Or we can focus on what the devil is doing and be miserable. Well, they were thankful for what God was uh, going to do. They prayed and believed. We can pray and believe and receive. Beloved, I know I've talked to so many people. So, you know, see, so God has got so many problems in the world and mine are so insignificant. If you're a born-again believer, your problems are his problems. He said he would take and go with us through those problems. Remember those disciples out there in that ship when they were about to go down? And the waves were coming into the ship and the men were scared and they cried out and God said, Peace be still. First of all, he said, You have little faith. But peace be still. In every storm of life, God is there with us. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, if they were here today, they'd tell you, right. And so can Daniel in the lion's den. So could little David when he took down that, uh, went out and took on that big giant. He knew, blessed well, he couldn't do it in his strength, but God could do it. Well, we can pray and doubt and go without. God rewarded their praying and praising in stocks and bonds. The earthquake, the prison doors opened, and they were free. Praise God, they were free. God is going to do some wonderful things for all believers. And Philippians 1, 20, 23. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, and whether it be my life by life, or by death, for to be to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, that is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I want not. Well, friends, listen. How to thankful preachers brought others to Christ? How? Well, the jailer and his family 
came to faith in Christ, verse 27, and the keeper of the prison, prison awakened out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prison had been at fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell before Paul and said, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in this house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and his all of his family. And when he had brought them out to his house, he sat meet before them and rejoiced, believing God with all of his house. Christ also believed and met with Paul and Silas to rejoice. Verse 40, And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia, and when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Thankful living can bring others to eternal life. Are you thankful, beloved, of what, for what God has done for you tonight? Let me ask you, are you trying to serve him or are you just kind of a, a nominal Christian? You go to church and you go to prayer meeting and, and all this, but are you, that's fine and that's good, but we're going beyond that. If, you, if that's all you got in Christianity, you haven't found the abundant life. Going and telling and sharing and giving is what Christianity is all about. Well, friends, let me ask you tonight. You say, well, Cecil, you know what? I'm not even a Christian. I, I believe in Christianity, but, you know, you talked about a, a personal relationship. Yes, that's when you look up and say, God, I know that Jesus died for me, and I'm so sorry, and I want to know you. So if you want to pray that prayer tonight and you have a tug in your old heart, bow your head with me right now, and, and I'll lead you in the sinner's prayer, the most powerful prayer known to man, and it goes like this. Kind Heavenly Father, in the very precious name of Jesus, oh Lord, I thank you for your life. Thank you for what you did on Calvary. And I'm, I'm so sorry for my sins. And tonight, Lord, I'm opening my heart and receiving you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed that prayer, get on the phone and call 303-471-8534. I'll not use your name on the air. I'll not embarrass you. I won't sit down and write and ask you for any money. Don't care where you go to church. I just want to know that you're going to go to heaven. Get on the phone tonight and call 303-471-8534. And if you can't afford to call, call me collect and I'll pick up the tab. I'm waiting for your call right now. Well, friends, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Moe. I want to thank you, dear friends, for listening. And I want you, want you to pray for me and my wife. We're having, you know, our health problems. But, you know, I'll be 86 years old next week. And you know what? This past 86 years have flown pretty fast, especially the last 55 years that I've known Jesus. Well, pray for your country. Oh, pray that God will get our uh, Democrats and Republicans together and say, hey, we've got to work for the country and not for ourselves. Pray that the president will uh, get rid of that health plan so that we can get back on our feet. Well, friends, until this time next Sunday night, I want you to be good to your neighbors. Stay sweet. Keep looking up for this wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night and may God bless you real, real good.